Hey dudes, welcome to another fantastic edition of Final Thoughts with Doob Radical here. Uh, thank you for joining with me. It's always fun doing these uh, kind of look backs at uh, these games that have been playing and the journeys we've been going. So yeah, today we're going to be looking at Black Sad Under the Skin, uh, developed by Pendulous Studios. A little bit about this game. Uh, this is actually based on a series of running graphic novels. Uh, last one came out in 2014. Uh, written by a couple of Spanish comic writers, uh, definitely uh, won won some awards, the Eisner Award, uh, and this is definitely the cult's niche audience. And I guess uh, enough fans came together and a game was made. And uh, yes, we have this product here, not episodic basis. This is <laughs> all in one long running game where uh, you know this is definitely in the light of games from Telltale, like Telltale Studios. Uh, like Walking Dead or Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, kind of meshed a little bit with L.A. Noir. There's a lot going on here gameplay-wise. We'll get into a little, uh, little bit of that here soon. Uh, but I just want to say I'm not too familiar with the source material, but as soon as I did see the trailer for this, this did originally come out last year uh, for PC and was just released a little bit later uh, in November for home consoles here. And so I wasn't too familiar with the source material, but I just saw that we had another choice-driven uh, action, adventure, story-driven narrative type game. And I just had to try it out because I'm always into these experiences. And I think this game kind of translates as far as comic to video game, kind of like how Telltale handled The Wolf Among Us from the Fables comments by Vertigo, uh, the company that produced uh, those series of comics and I feel like it's kind of set in the universe in its own kind of tale uh, a separate from the stories that you've probably seen in the graphic novels but yeah let's just get right into it here with the rest of the game so yeah uh, is gameplay wise that is kind of the most important thing I think any game should be regardless of what you're looking for here uh, yeah the um I'm gonna say this I think you will get more out of this game if you're maybe more familiar with the characters have been reading the graphic novels for a while uh there definitely seems to be some reveals and characters uh that seem to be uh important and uh kind of make the whole story uh cohesive but uh, with the gameplay here yeah you'll be doing a lot of la noir telltale like uh inspecting of clues and uh, yeah, you play as John Blacksad the whole game, uh, and you'll kind of be reacting and interviewing the characters around you to find out who done it. That's the ultimate goal of this game. It's a classic murder, thriller, noir narrative where you'll pretty much get all the tropes here of backstabbing and plot twists. So yeah, pretty much that make uh, your classic who done it tale. Uh, exciting and interesting because I'm I'm gonna be honest here the gameplay can feel a little sluggish it can be a little slow walking around uh, there's not really a lot happening around you it seems very still most of the time granted there is a lot of cool animations kind of backing up a lot of the items you'll be identifying uh, there's even a cool mechanic where you'll be going into Bl uh, Bl John Black's had senses and connecting clues. It does kind of hold your hand a little bit. It really gives you the allure like you're a detective while still kind of leading you along and giving you clues on what you're looking for. You won't really be getting stuck too often uh, as this is a very choice driven game. Uh, well, the game will present uh, multiple choices, especially when talking to different characters and deciding how you want to talk with other characters and uh, what evidence you want to line up. Uh, but again, like I said, it does kind of walk you through it and uh, your choices uh, really do have a good effect on the overall, overall uh, branching story pass of the game. I felt like it, it did do a really good job of uh, remembering decisions you've made earlier in on the game. Uh, that kind of come back later. Uh, and yes, some of them are very minor. Of course, we have kind of the, um, much like the narrative Telltale is created where uh, you'll be talking with characters and have decisions that don't really have any impact, some that have a minor impact, and then, of course, the classic two-choice 
uh, narrative decisions where it will have a big impact on characters ultimately living or perishing throughout the experience. Um, but yeah, it really does feel like it flows well with how you want to play your experience in the very small levels they do allow you to walk around and there's this is not an open world game the gameplay i'm showing here is just from a small tidbit of uh early portion out of the game and i don't want to spoil too much because this game does drag you along with the characters and uh yeah the theme of it it is very 1940s uh it's an anthropomorphic take on uh, much like you find with art spiegelman's mouse not sure if you do uh, dubs have been uh reading that at all but I love Mouse, and I love how it takes really dark and hard themes, tr not only translate them into a video game, but translate them well and allows you to kind of put your two cents in uh, about the story and the characters in real life history. I mean, this really deals with uh, PTSD and uh, it touches on a lot of like little, other little themes that happened in the late 1940s. And of course, we have the aesthetic. And the music is amazing here. The music really does bring you in. Uh, really just connects well with uh, the kind of the upbeat, noir, uh, chasing run, Pink Panther type music here. And the anthropomorphism here is, uh, is basically what made me want to check out this game. I love how it has this aesthetic. If, th if all these were human characters, this would be a very less exciting game. Uh, it's very cool to see all the different animals and how they kind of uh, play into their character. There are some stereotypes when dealing with the animals and how they actually do act within the game, but that's uh, kind of just how it goes, and it kind of gives you just an easy caricature of the person you're identifying with. And also, it it is a very realistic, gritty game that deals with racial segregation yeah they're not only animals but they do have a race attached to their character it's a little unclear sometimes uh the representation of some of these uh animals and how they would relate to a real life human figure but that's a little bit beside the point i just thought that was interesting there is interesting concepts that are intertwined with this anthropomorphic take on 1940s uh new york is the setting here uh, we will be traveling from scene to scene, uh, doing quick time events. And again, the, the quick time events, uh, again, I, I just have to make a big note about this. The quick time events can, I, I get really annoyed when a QTE uh, relates to a big, it's almost like your decision. And if you miss a quick time event, it'll, it could vastly change your story in a way that really does make you want to kind of just go back and reload your game to change your outcome. Uh, and not only in the quick time events, but in the uh, decision making moments as well. I just find that that's kind of what happens a lot in these uh, story driven narratives where uh, the game will try to save your decision if you're not quick enough. But if you are quick enough, you're sometimes able to replay the whole scene and try to change your decision kind of much like man of madan which we most recently played as well and i just feel like there's got to be a, a somewhat better solution i especially got really irritated with the quick time uh events where i just feel like that's a little bit of a cheap shot into making uh you replay the game almost in some instances that being said there is a really nice option where you can go back to previous scenes uh, change your decision and then play with a different outcome um, but it's just kind of confusing uh, you know granted this you could play this game in one run and kind of just keep re redoing your decisions to further the game in the way you want when I think the real intent is to have another playthrough and still live with those decisions there uh, again yeah this is about a 10 to 15 hour experience depending on how much you're really investigating uh the clues and uh that being said you know as far as gameplay wise yes it feels sluggish but if you know what you're getting into here with this type of gameplay i think you'll kind of let it go a little bit because this is definitely for the story this is definitely not for the gameplay so yeah it, it's just kind of uh with all walks of life i really do want to make sure that i give each genre of game a little love and i'm really into these experiences and i hope we keep seeing more i love the aesthetic of this game 
it looks really great. Uh, yeah, there's just those uh, the really kind of what makes the game can kind of break it as well uh, as far as the decisions because really uh, there's not much too much to talk about gameplay wise here. There are collectibles uh, littered throughout the entire game and of course you can only collect some in certain instances and uh, collecting all the collectibles here is not really a I'd say fun opportunity. It is more of a chore. This game actually does have a uh, completely 0% uh, platinum trophy rating on PlayStation anyway. I'm not sure if that's true was said with Xbox, but uh, getting the collectibles here uh, is definitely a chore. And uh, there's, there's just no real much fun to go back. It is in the form of baseball cards, which I guess can be pretty fun to uh, see some of these other characters. And there was a lot of work kind of put into the... Uh, the overall lore of this whole uh, scenario. I mean, yeah, there was a lot for Pendulo Studios to grab from here uh, as, as far as characters and story and setting. And it is fun. The, really, the biggest thing that'll keep you stringing along in this uh, choice-driven narrative game uh, will be definitely the characters and ultimately seeing who done it at the end. I just feel... Uh, that I wish it was a little bit more polished, especially when there's so much uh, different games to play and choose from, uh, especially in the twilight of this generation. But with everything being said, even though with the sluggish gameplay, the characters do really warrant uh, maybe at least one playthrough. Uh, this is a discounted title. We are going to be giving Black Set a 7 out of 10 today. I really was battling with a 6 versus a 7. I think there's just enough here to warrant that extra point especially if you're familiar uh with the source material as, as far as all the different uh stories and maybe you'll be able to connect and um forego the gameplay a little bit to to see the story play out and to maybe even play it again uh as a different black said there is a really cool progress tracker uh depending on how you want to play your backs black sad and how you want to talk to the characters. The voice acting work is, is okay here. There's no one super crazy notable. Just a couple of actors from uh, Detroit Become Human. Um, but that being said, uh, I did I did overall enjoy the experience here. But I felt like I really did have to kind of push myself uh, at the end to really get to the end and see who done it. And uh, I really didn't feel like playing through it again there wasn't a, a really standout moment there's a lot of slow burn little moments that are cool uh when listening to the characters and the themes and there's some really nice kind of deep dialogue and uh, things about uh politics and and race and segregation and all that um but it is cool to kind of just see once and kind of just to leave it on its own there um so Take uh, the thoughts as I have said here. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Final Thoughts. You can see my whole playthrough on my channel. And thank you so much, dupes, for listening. And as always, we'll be right back.